Here, we are going to learn a theorem from geometry called Mamikon's theorem and it can solve problems which otherwise need calculus. So instead of using calculus, we'll be using geometric means to solve certain problems here. So suppose we have been given a circle like this and it is kept on the ground like this. So let that be our x-axis. And if we set it rolling without slip, and as you know, a circle rolling without slip, any point on it traces a cycloid. So here is a cycloid being traced by such a circle. Then we are going to enclose that cycloid in a rectangular box like this. And we are going to talk about three areas, the area of this rectangle, area of this rolling circle, and area under the cycloid. Now rectangle and circle are easy, but to find the area under the cycloid, we typically need calculus. And Mamikon's theorem helps us find it without calculus. So let's see how. For that, we are going to sort of freeze this motion of the circle. And let us look at this point G over here, which is in contact with the ground. Now the circle is rolling without slip on the ground. That means there is no relative motion between this point on the circle and the ground. But the ground is at rest. So to have no relative motion, this point also must be at rest. But how can that be? on a moving body which is rolling and moving in this direction, how can it have a point which is not moving at all? This is possible only if this point becomes the center of rotation of this entire circle. I'm not saying that all the time the circle is going to rotate about this point, but at least at this instant, it is doing so. In fact, therefore, this point G is also called as the instantaneous center of rotation. So all points on the circumference of the circle inside of the circle are going to rotate about point G. Even this tracing point T is not an exception. At this instant, it is rotating about this point G. So it is going to trace a tiny elementary arc of a circle, which is part of the cycloid, of course. So if we draw the radius of that circle like this from the center to this point, then that radius will be normal to that circular arc. But because that tiny circular arc is a part of this cycloid, it is also normal to the cycloid itself. And if we know the normal, we can also draw the tangent. It is just a perpendicular drawn to the normal like this. Let us draw this tangent. And we will extend it till it meets the rectangle. Now we can set this whole thing in motion again and see how this normal and tangent vary. Focus on this yellow line over here which is a tangent to the cycloid and which also happens to be the chord of this circle. As you can notice, in any position, the two endpoints of this yellow segment lie on the circle. So it's a chord of the circle. And what the chord is doing? It is shrinking at first. You can see it is shortening in length, becomes zero, and then it lengthens out to the diameter. So it is changing in length as well as direction. All this variation we are going to summarize over here. So let us take a copy of this circle and show the copy of that chord inside. Only this circle we will keep stationary. And now let us set it rolling. You can see this chord is getting copied. So it is just a replica that we have created within a stationary circle. And as it does so, it is also going to sweep out an area and we can actually trace that area. So here is the area swept out by the chord. Now we are very close to half the roll and half the roll is over and you will see this has traced an area equal to one semicircle and the latter half of course it will uh, do another semicircle. So the conclusion is as the circle rolls in one cycle, this chord over here traces out area equivalent to the circle. But that's not the only thing this chord is doing. It is sweeping out some area over here also. So how much could that area be? So let us see uh, how this uh, line is drawn. It lies within the cycloid and the rectangle all the time. So one point on the cycloid, the other end on the rectangle. So the area it sweeps is going to be trapped between the cycloid and the rectangle. So let's show that area over here like this. So this is the area traced out by this chord and this is the area traced out by the same chord over here. So both chords are doing the same thing. So the two areas must be equal. So the area over here between the cycloid and rectangle must be equal to the area of a semicircle. And what about the entire area like this? Well, it will be the entire circle over here. 
So that's our conclusion. The area trapped between a bounding box and a cycloid is equal to the area of the circle that created it. Now all that remains is simple arithmetic. Take the area of the rectangle, subtract the area of the circle to get the area under cycloid. So we'll start by dimensioning the rectangle over here. Its height is going to be 2 times the radius of this circle. Its length is going to be 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle. So that's the area of the rectangle. From it, we are going to subtract area of the circle pi r square to get the area under the cycloid as 3 pi r square. So this is Mamikon's theorem. It uses the sweeping chords or sweeping lines uh, between two curves to find the area between them. So it's a very powerful thing and you can see uh, we did not use any calculus to find this complicated area.